what to do, what to do. Hey friends, this is Rebecca with the Center for Natural Living. We're at Greenbrier, checking out their schoolhouse. This is Jojo. Hi. <laughs> Do you want to give us a tour and kind of show us around? There's a mail room in here for, you know, we have a mailbox out the street out on the road. So everybody has a little slot for the mail. And that's where it's distributed. And how many families live here on the property? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe 20 families. Cool. Yeah, all right. 50 people in all. Wow. Yeah. Something, yeah. something like that. I haven't That's counted. super impressive. I love the kids. They're so sweet. We had a really good time um, jumping on the trampoline with them. <laughs> Oh yeah. Wow, is this the library? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. I love that. The windows, the tile work. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> How long have you been here? Living here. My kids came here in uh, 72. Oh, wow. And I've been living here off and on. Oh, wow. Nice. And down here is a pool table and ping pong. All right. I think it's a little bit too dark probably to see it, but that is a very large size room. And this is the main school area? Well, this is, uh, this is the uh, area. And then there's a kids' school area over here. Woo! Yeah. We do Aww. meetings here, we do meetings, and we do potlucks. There's little kitty and cat. School and Hi, kitty cat! Some of the classes are... It's different houses. Mm -hmm. Like today, one of the classes was out on the picnic bench, out on the picnic table. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. That's sweet. Because the classes are small. Mm -hmm. Six, four, six kids. Yeah. Look at this room, Rebecca. A little kid's uh, kindergarten kind of Oh, thing. wow. Oh, this is special. What a very beautiful space. Okay, I'm going to try to snag an interview with someone who lives here so that we can learn more about this awesome community just east of Austin, Texas. Hey friends, this is Rebecca Powers at the Center for Natural Living and we're here with Dave Ballow. 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 <laughs> and we're at Greenbrier, um, this amazing community that I've had an opportunity to walk through. Um, I'm not going to provide too much detail because, oh, sweet Jack actually gave me a tour of the community when we were walking around. This artist and musician, actually there's children all over the place, which was something I picked up on immediately. It's very um, geared toward children. Can you tell us a little bit about the community and your experiences living here for over two decades? Oh, a little bit about the community. Well, the community was started as a school. The place was started as an alternative school back in the late 60s. So uh, the community aspect of things was, well, I wasn't here at the time, was somewhat, I'm guessing, an afterthought. Mm -hmm. At least was initially it was the school. Children were bussed out from Austin. All the staff lived in Austin. And at some point, some of the teachers and their families moved out to live on the property, partly to save time because they were getting up at the crack of dawn, driving out here for an hour, working on building school, building school building, building a road. Kids would show up at 9 or 10 o'clock. They would teach till the kids went home. Then we'd go pick up the tools, finish doing some carpentry, go back at dark, get up, do it again. Mm. They were spending money they did, didn't need to spend on rent in town. Oh, yeah. Because we didn't get paid much. And, Eat, sleep, uh, repeat sort of vibe. Yeah. So the community began around that nucleus of the teachers and some uh, other folks that they invited to come out and join in this experimental school. And the community has grown over the years and has waxed and waned and been different things. And today it is what it is. But we continue to be a school. We're officially a school K-12 and continue to teach classes. And every Wednesday there's a potluck here, which is actually why I came out um, tonight with my friend Ashley and her daughter Faith. And um, you're just walking around. And I, I want to say there's at least 15 kids who live here. I mean, it's... Yes, probably a little more. Somewhere in the neighborhood, between 15 and 20. But again, the, some years there are more, some there are less. But yes, currently there are about that many. It's incredible. Uh, I've visited a lot of intentional communities and I'm totally blown away. The ambiance and energy here is really special. Um, can you speak a little bit more about what type of um, schooling or education or like unschooling is something that I'm fascinated by and it seems like the glue to a lot of communities is to have a social place and here you have this amazing school where they come perhaps for creative 
um, for learning and for even this community potluck sort of sort of vibe. So what's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> 25 words or less. Um, part of this, we were part of the alternative school movement in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, I would not say we're unschoolers. We're a little more structured than that, though not a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, always we have sat down at the beginning of any given semester with the kids and their parents. What do you want to learn? And then we make up a curriculum around what their interests are. Um, and certainly attendance at class has never been mandatory. Um, though for the most part now we're, we're more currently a support program for kids that are homeschooled. So two mm -hmm. days a week we have scheduled classes. The kids that want to participate in them do. And uh, then the rest of the week they're home with their parents doing homeschooling activities. Uh, oh. When I first came, we were busing kids out from Austin. At that time, we were the alternative school for the Austin community. Kids were bused out, and we had six paid teachers, and um, we had 60 to 80 students back in the day. Wow. Now we're, and it was a five-day-a-week school. Now we're doing, again, a more, more homeschool support for kids that are about two days a week uh, we are hoping to expand that program and and looking for more students and more teachers and but currently everything's volunteer so mm -hmm. it's hard to get everything done I love that everything's voluntary and that you take a moment to really sit down and say what is it that you even what are your expectations what do you want to learn yes. uh, okay so switching gears I learned that half the community most of the community um, is still tapped into the grid, although you said that you're living off grid and have yes. been, and there's another family as well. So can you kind of speak to the infrastructure, something um, that, that maybe you've learned along the way that you would <laughs> provide that experience, you know, so that more people can live off the grid or live that sort of well, lifestyle? living off the grid, there's not a magic to it so much as it's a you need to be willing to simplify your lifestyle. That is a commitment, and not many people are willing to do that. So, for instance, Greg wants an air conditioner in his house, and he's got an electric refrigerator. I have never had an electric refrigerator because I don't have enough money I, because we work volunteer work, or even when we were paid, it wasn't much. So, money is tight. Mm -hmm. So, I don't have enough power to feel confident I can run an electric refrigerator. Um, you can do that, but to run to run a fully electric household is thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, which is not someplace I personally care to go. But that being said, um, yeah, we started out with one panel and one electric light bulb, and, mm -hmm. a, and a car radio for music in the house. You know, and I think my boys were 13ish before we had an electric light bulb in their bedroom. But that's not a big deal. It's just you do what you do. Yeah. And and. Uh, a part of when we started this school back in the 60s and the back to nature movement, I mean, we were into living more simply and we didn't, we weren't into a lot of material acquisitions. And um, partly that was out of necessity because we didn't have the money to do so. But it was also, again, a conscious choice to try and live more simply and, and role model that. Yes, thank you. We wanted to role model that for the children, yeah. for the students. So anyway, you just do what you do. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I see that there's more and more people nowadays who are kind of retrograding, going back to the minimalist sort of lifestyle. Yes. And, and that's why I wanted to take this time with you to kind of speak with you about your experience because that's so incredible that you've been doing this for so long. I'm sure that you have much wisdom to share. Um, if people want to connect with you or connect with the community or come out to visit as I am and my friend Ashley are right now, um, what can they do to reach out to you or find your website? Or are there events that you'd like anybody to attend in the Austin area? Well, sure. So we have a, oh, I'm the wrong person now. I don't do technology. <laughs> But probably um, quick we Google have a search, website. Right? That's a, it's I think it's Weebly, uh, mm -hmm. Green Bar School at Weebly.com. Okay. Other people would be able to tell you more correctly that, but we are we do have a, a an online presence, um, and we do the Wednesday potlucks. You can contact me either through the uh, we're also listed on the IC.org site. Yes. Intentional community. Yes. Yes. So I am the contact person through that. So you can contact me through there for sure. Uh, they can call me. And the number is five one two. Nine six one two four five two. Um, just you know, call and arrange a time to come visit. Generally, Wednesday potlucks are the best time for a visit, but mm -hmm. uh, we can arrange other times. And uh, this October on Columbus Day weekend, we are celebrating 
50 years of 50 being years. here. 50 years. So wow. that's open party, open oh. house, whatever. So yes, Fabulous. people can come out and join us for our celebration of being here. For 50 in October. Years. Uh, the weekend of the, the three day weekend in October, which is Columbus Day weekend. Okay, party people. So we need to have a perma blitz out here <laughs> for the 50th. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Big celebration. So um, we're spreading the word now, starting now. And um, hopefully you'll come out and see the community and meet all the fine folk here. Thank you so much for your time, Dave. It's my pleasure. And Thank you. Um, yes, may we go. Enjoy this potluck or I what? Think we should. All right, and hopefully we'll see y'all at one here pretty soon. Bye. What to do? What to do? What to do?